This is Duke University. My name is Tom Parker and I am visiting Duke University uh, well, last spring and this fall. I'm with the Humanities Writ Large program and um, I'm working on a project with some colleagues here at Duke called Subnature and Culinary Culture. So now the question is, what is subnature? And as it turns out, it's a neologism coined by a professor of uh, architecture and art history named David Gisson. It was coined in 2009. And subnature is, um, it refers to a phenomenon that has existed since the time of Vitruvius uh, with architects. And the idea is that um, for an architect, there are certain spaces and buildings that are, are things that we want when we're going to spend time in a place or live in a place, and those things are light, flow, airiness, space. But there are also these spaces, there are, there are qualities that we don't want, and some of those include uh, dust, dirt, stagnancy, lack of flow, uh, moisture, outskirts, uh, weeds, pigeons, so the list goes on and on. And Gisson's idea was that this, that this, uh, this category of subnature could be, could tell us a lot about how we live and who we are and, and, the, and, the, and the term in terms of architecture. So what my colleagues at Duke and I have done uh, is transform, take this uh, concept and apply it to food. So there are qualities of foods or certain foods that have been marginalized um, in certain societies throughout history. And we ask, uh, what, why, why, has, why have these foods been marginalized or othered, as one might say? And, um, and in some cases, they're reappropriated um, and reframed as something valuable, so no longer as sub-natures, so to speak, but as something that uh, people might want to eat. And so a list of these foods, just to give some examples uh, that, cor that correlate with a list uh, of architectural qualities would be foods like um, fragrant or stinky cheeses, um, uh, things like uh, uh, awful, the parts, the, any, anything that's not high on the hog and, and the pork. Um, and some other ones uh, could be oysters, which are bottom feeders, and um, uh, the, list, uh, the, list, the list goes on and on. And it, it includes textures as well. For example, we in the West like things that are crunchy and squishy or slimy is sort of a sub-natured quality, whereas in other places, um, people like those qualities and, they, and crunchy isn't as high on their list of priorities for things they like. So we've got, during the month of September, we've got uh, a bunch of classes that are co-convening uh, and the, all these classes are in different disciplines and they uh, range from the sciences, the social sciences, to uh, the humanities here at Duke. And they're all treating the subject of food in one way or another. So just to, to discuss a couple of the events, um, for, for one, um, this is my, my personal favorite, it's the most exciting, well, I don't know if it's the most exciting, it's, but one of the most exciting is that we're actually building a smokehouse on campus and it's going up behind the Allen building as we speak. In, in fact, I'm sort of wondering how progress is going while I'm not there. And, um, and the smokehouse itself is going to be a place for people to congregate and, and to contemplate smoke. Um, because if you think about it, uh, Duke is, the history of smoke is a part of Duke itself. And smoke was reappropriated from cigarettes to become Duke University. And, um, and, uh, and become what, what, what Duke is today. So it goes right with our theme. Uh, and briefly, a couple of other events. Um, where Duke Dining is doing an entire subnature uh, based theme meal for the, for, the, for the freshman class on September 18th. So we're going to have uh, foragers come in and take students on walks to hunt for mushrooms around campus. We're going to have uh, people come in and, and uh, discuss eating insects, for example. And we're going to have a heritage hog roast in the middle of campus. So that's going to be pretty exciting. And then um, one more, and there are many events I'm not speaking about, but one more event is uh, in early October, we're having um, the Nordic Food Lab, uh, which is in Copenhagen and works with Noma, uh, the restaurant that was recently voted the number one best restaurant in the world of, for haute cuisine, they're sending a representative here um, to Durham, 
and we're going to have a lecture and a meal uh, about uh, subnatured foods, which the area chefs, James Beard nominees and winners, who are going to do their version of Carolina's subnature. And um, the reason that Noma is important and the Nordic Food Lab is important is because they're, um, what they try to do is they, they look for foods that most people wouldn't consider to be that edible, like seaweed or moss or insects, and they turn it, them into haute cuisine, like this three-star sort of restaurant experience. So we're going to challenge people and ask them to reconsider why or why we eat foods or don't eat foods. Um, and uh, um, that's pretty much it. I would just say that uh, it sounds very hedonistic, but there's a, a, a large intellectual apparatus that goes along with it. And um, we're, uh, we're really hoping that um, the undergraduates will uh, be enthusiastic about this, uh, this project and that they'll work between the, the, the disciplines and uh, the sciences and the humanities and come up with some really interesting projects. So thank you very much and I hope that you can attend some of our events. <laughs>